Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making a little sweet treat that requires only two ingredients. It's an old fashioned recipe. It's been around for a long time, probably since I think they started selling frosting in the supermarket is my guess, but it's been around for a while, but of course, TikTok has popularized it and we are going to be making peanut butter fudge with only two ingredients, which of course, as the title begs for one to ask, what are the two ingredients? They are vanilla frosting store-bought and peanut butter. The not fancy kind, the kind that is delicious and sweet. We're gonna combine these together and somehow it's supposed to make peanut butter fudge. It looks legitimate. I think my biggest concern, worry, or a bit of skepticism would be the texture. How does something so creamy and smooth, something so creamy and smooth combine forces to create something that has a fudge-like texture? I'm not really sure. And that's why I'm here, because I want to know. So this is supposed to make a fudge, but then when I was researching this recipe, I found another one that requires another two ingredients, another jar of peanut butter, and white chocolate candy melts. It's also known as white almond bark. It doesn't taste like almond at all. It's just a compound chocolate, meaning it's not a pure white chocolate. It has other fats besides the cocoa butter to make it solidify and you don't need to temper it. I'm using a combination of these Ghirardelli white chocolate candy melts that I found at the grocery store along with some white chocolate chips because I had some leftover from a recipe. Fudge making reminds me of another time I made fudge a couple times actually. I made it once with Velveeta cheese. Don't knock it till you try it. And I made another one, which is the marshmallow fluff, no fail fudge recipe. You don't need a candy thermometer. That one is an excellent classic recipe. It's actually on the container of marshmallow fluff. It is so good. Jif smooth peanut butter and a container of vanilla frosting. You put this in the microwave and warm it for about 30 seconds to one minute, depending on the power of your microwave. And we're gonna dump it into a bowl. Bloop. Look how creamy and smooth that is when it's warm. Now my family eats peanut butter and we normally get like a crunchy natural kind of peanut butter. That's what we like. But for this recipe, I would go for the jiffy the Jif or the Skippy, <laughs> because we want it to be ultra smooth for the fudge. And we want that little bit of sugar and what do they put in there? Emulsifiers to make it nice and smooth. Sugar, vegetable oils, and salt. So this too, I opened, removed the lid and warmed up for about one minute in the microwave. Now, if you're going to heat in these containers, make sure you remove the seal on that they often are metallic and that will spark in your microwave so make sure you remove all of it try to get the edges clean too dump that in Ooh, look at that this is gonna be sweet <laughs> basically eating frosting this reminds me of my buddy carl whose mom used to buy him containers of store-bought frosting and he would just eat it Ahead of your time, Carl, ahead of your time. Now we're going to combine the frosting with the peanut butter. It smells manufactured. <laughs> what I mean by that, it smells like a ice cream shop, that kind of sweet and vanilla-y smell, along with peanut butter, which smells fantastic. Wow, it's already thickening up, look at that. All right, what magic powers make it do that? Maybe it's the hydrogenate. Look at that. It's already thickening. I was skeptical. So in the comments of this recipe, which I'll put a link to down below, many suggested storing this in the refrigerator because it does get soft once it starts to warm up. But oh my goodness, look at this consistency. Luscious. It was practically liquid. And now it's like, mmm. This one for the frosting. Put a nice F on it. F means you are fine. Dollop that in. Look at that. It's like cake batter, yo. Okay. That has got to be one of the easiest recipes I've ever, ever. I mean, we're combining two ingredients. Oh, this is an eight by eight cake pan, by the way. And smear this into 
the pan. This is parchment lined. That will help us get the fudge out. If you don't have parchment, you could use plastic wrap or you could try buttering it generously. We've got the white chocolate almond bark stuff. Look how white that is. They must put some sort of whitening in that. One container of warmed peanut butter. This has just been warmed so it's a little bit more liquid. We're gonna mix. This one is pourable, look at that. Pour, much more fluid. It's a beautiful thing about working with candy melts and chocolate. When you tap, it just levels. So we're gonna let these cool to room temperature before we pop them in the refrigerator and let them chill for at least an hour or two or until everything is nice and set. So then we can slice them and taste them and see definitively which two ingredient peanut butter fudge is the winner. All right, see you in a little bit. All right, my lovelies, I am back. It has been a full 12 hours since I put my fudge in the refrigerator. I didn't have enough time to come back to cut them, but that's okay. They can sit in the fridge and wait for you when you're ready. This is the one that was made with the white chocolate. Very smooth surface. Parchment paper makes it very easy to take out. This one has a very kind of old timey, rougher finish on the top. Fudge is typically eaten in small quantities, so I'm gonna cut these in about one inch cubes. Now fudge in the US is a little bit different than the fudge in the UK. From my understanding, fudge in the UK tends to be more of a milky, buttery, kind of confection, caramelly in flavor, while in the US it often is chocolate fudgy, but they both have the same kind of consistency. Very, very dense and intensely sweet. So apparently the first written record of fudge in this form was written in 1888 by a college student by the name of Emlyn Battersby Hartridge. And she wrote that she got this recipe from a friend's cousin. She made some for a fundraiser at Vassar College and sold it. It was became widely popular. And then a lot of other colleges adopted some kind of fudge making, selling as a form of fundraising. So even to this day, if you go to those colleges, there are recipes to make fudge. So let's go ahead and cut our fudge. It cuts beautifully. I'm not having any issue with sticking at all. Don't have to wipe the blade at all. It's cutting very, very nicely. Look at that. That's perfect. It looks like a little caramel cube, doesn't it? This one is much firmer in texture. And this looks like perfection too. Look at that. Such clean slices. Alrighty, so now that we've cut everything, let's give them a taste and see which one is better. I'm gonna go with the frosting one first. Alrighty, peanut butter fudge. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Very peanut buttery. I like that quite a bit. And sweet, but not overpoweringly, too vacantly sweet. Some fudges I've had, in general, I don't care for it because they're, it's so, so, so sweet. But this one has a nice balance of sweetness and definite peanut butter intensity. It's actually pretty soft. If I break it, maybe you can see it better. A little bit crumbly, but not at all crystalline. The texture of this is very much like the inside of a peanut butter ball. In fact, I think this would be a great base for peanut butter balls, which are those homemade candies that have the peanut butter center and the outside is dipped in dark chocolate or chocolate. And the texture is slightly crumbly, but it still kind of is cohesive and sticks together. Very good. There is a slight vanilla flavor from the vanilla frosting, but it's not overpowering at all, and it doesn't taste cloyingly fake. Now let's compare that with the white chocolate version. Much smoother and firmer. In fact, if I try to break it, it doesn't break nearly as easily. It kind of wants to slide. Mm. Mm hmm. Very different consistency. You can see my teeth very distinctively in that. The texture is much smoother, not at all crumbly. Mm hmm. And it just kind of melts and slides inside of your mouth. I really like the texture of that. It's very slick and slippery, more like a chocolate ganache. When you take chocolate and cream and you heat them together, to make the inside of a truffle ball. That's what this is like, very smooth and kind of luscious in your mouth. But in terms of peanut buttery flavor, I think the frosting one is more intense. The peanut butter flavor is much more distinctive and clear and bigger in the frosting one. Well, in the 
chocolate one or the candy melt one, it's still very peanut buttery, but it's a little bit more subdued. The taste is of course subjective, but if I were to choose between the two, I think I would lean towards the frosting one. Although I like the candy melt one as well, it looks very clean and elegant when you slice it. The frosting one just has, I think, a better kind of flavor with the balance of vanilla and very strong peanut, peanut, peanut buttery flavors, very peanut buttery. And more of a texture that I connect to fudge. All right, Amel, Louise, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.